Hi, it's Paul. Last time I talked about what a project is, and basically the main definition is it's time bounded. So it has a specific starting point and a specific ending point. Unlike a process that goes on and on uh, until the company goes out of business. But why do we have to manage a project differently than a process? Let's take a look. If we look at what's important to both, a process and a project, and for this example, I'm using a grocery store and building a custom house. Money is obviously important to both. Both of them have people working on them. Uh, time is important to both. With a grocery store, things have to happen at a certain time of day. With a project, things have to be completed by a certain time. Quality is important. There's tools involved, there's transportation, there's factories or warehouses or stores, there's some kind of uh, buildings typically involved. So both the project and the process have a lot of similar concerns, similar priorities. So why do we have to manage projects differently than a process? Well, let's take a, a deeper look. Now the first thing is that Time is different for processes and projects. With a grocery store, the same things happen every day. The bread delivery person will come usually in the morning, stock the shelves, take away the stale bread. The milk delivery will come. People come and go buying their products and staff, of course, have to be there when the customers are there to make the business run. Uh, so time of day is really important to processes. A project, on the other hand, uh, new activities start every week or every month, and then they'll complete, and then those activities uh, typically are finished for the project, and then different activities will start. All the small activities have start and end dates, and the project, of course, has a start and end date. So the, the time is very different in a project than a process. But why does that matter? Why does that make us manage them differently? Let's look at money. Money is always very important. With a grocery store, money arrives almost continuously. Customers come in, buy their products, their produce, and their whatever food they're buying, and they pay for it and they go. The bills are scheduled and they're expected. So the store has to pay for the produce it buys, the milk it buys, the bread, the meat, all those things that it buys to resell, it has to pay on a scheduled basis. Now the income and the expenses don't really vary much from month, month to month. They have a similar amount of income every month and they have a similar amount of expenses every month. Of course it varies uh, from season to season and stores get busier and they get slower but basically there's not much variation they also have dedicated departments to handle all their payments they have purchasing and finance departments and they make all the payments so the people managing the store don't really get involved with that very much okay a custom house on the other hand the money is going to arrive in big lumps uh, typically they'll get a builder's loan and the bank will release chunks of money at different periods during the project. But it's, uh, it's very large chunks and there could be a span of, of weeks or months between any money coming into the project. So compared to a process, projects are very different with their income. Built payments are also very irregular. They don't have uh, like a monthly payment to their bread supplier. They hire a subcontractor to do something like a foundation and they don't pay the subcontractor anything typically until they're all finished. Then when they're finished, they pay the entire bill. So they could every once in a while get a, a really large bill that they have to pay as opposed to the grocery store that's paying a, a set amount or almost set amount every month. Also with a project, the amount of income and the amount of expenses can vary dramatically. Early in the project, the expenses might be very small. Uh, during the, the middle of the project, when there's a lot going on, the expenses could be extremely high. 
And then at the end of the project, again, the expenses could be quite small. Lastly, the project manager typically handles all the money flow. So they might not write the checks, but they decide when, when they're going to pay things and they have to manage all of that money. Okay, people. People are very different too between a process and a project. With a grocery store, you have the same people working pretty much every day, or at least every week. The duties are all pretty well established, and the skill levels of all the employees are quite well known, or they should be. And most of the people are internal people. They work for the, the store. They work for the company that owns the store. So it's, a, it's an internal workforce. The, everyone is known, and it's somewhat predictable. With a custom house, on the other hand, most of the people working on the project don't actually work directly for the project manager or the general contractor. There's new people on every task. The duties vary greatly, so the foundation people don't have the same type of duties as the electricians and different from the painters. The skill levels are often unknown. When the general contractor hires a subcontractor, he or she might not know who the people are that are going to be working on the project. And it's mostly external people. Let's take a look at all this kind of together. Here's a sample construction plan for a, for a custom house. And this is very basic. It's, it's very, very short. But let's look at what's going on. In this first phase, the design phase, maybe, the, maybe that designer actually works for the general contractor. And there might only be one or two people working on the project. So they go for about a month with just one or two people working. And because they're internal, of course those people want to be paid, you know, regular paycheck. So the project manager or the general contractor is going to be paying that labor or that salary on a regular basis and they may not have any income into the project yet. You see down at the bottom here we've got the payments. There's three lump payments on this project. One is 25% near the beginning of the project. Looks like it's when the design is finished. There's another 25% after the foundation is finished. And then 50% is paid a week or two after the entire project is finished. So there's three lump payments. At the beginning, we only have one or two people, and then they get a payment. So that's pretty good. Then the foundation is being done. So that's maybe three or four people. And somewhere around the end of the foundation, they get another payment which coincides to when that foundation contractor has to be paid. So that's working out pretty good. Uh, there's lots of money in the project. But let's look at what happens here in July and August. We've got electrical, plumbing, drywall, and painting. They're all going on kind of at the same time. So that's going to be a small army of people working on the project, and there's going to be lots of material costs for the project too. But as you can see, We've had two 25% payments early in the project, and right when all this activity is going on, when all the bills are coming in, there's no money coming into the project. Then at the very end, the well, we've got a bar here for finishing. So the, the project manager maybe has one or two people just working on all the details to get this project finished. And that might take a long time to get wrapped up. Now the expenses during that finishing period are probably pretty low because they're not really buying much for materials and they only have a couple people working on it. But they don't get paid their 50% payment until all of that work is done. Meanwhile, all these other electrical, plumbing and drywall contractors all want to be paid. So it's a, a real big deal managing the money in a project. And managing the people is also a real big deal because this project manager at the beginning has one or two people on the project 
in the middle he might have 20 or 30 people on the project and at the end he's back down to one or two people so it's a very uneven amount of people a very uneven amount of money flow and it just takes a lot to manage it so that's why projects have to be managed quite a bit differently than processes okay hope that helps to explain it and thanks for listening